I was like, <laughs> I was like, she has my lipstick choice, and she's gonna, she's gag me. Hello, everyone. I'm Joey Nolte with EW Broadcasting Live today on C-SPAN from the floor of the United Nations as we attempt to solve this divine diplomatic crisis that has two-thirds of North America entrenched in the queerest woman-on-woman -woman showdown in history. Here to hash out the best moments from what was truly the global Olympics of drag, RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 8, please welcome our top two finalists and honestly, current world leaders, I think we can agree. Representing the United States, we have President Candy Muse. Hi. <laughs> and representing Canada, we have Prime Minister Jimbo. Oh, wow. So how do you feel about this international crisis that you have all <laughs> started? Well, I, in this debate of national crisis, I'm obviously Team Candy Muse. You know, I'm so excited to be representing the North, educating, you know, some of the Americans about our beautiful country up there and um, the fact that there is a country up there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So, but you are unfortunately declaring war on each other. We have to say that now. We're here to solve it. Yeah. We are yeah, here we to are. solve this. As yeah. the top two of Drag Race All Stars 8, I mean, congratulations. You both did so well on this season. It was, it's seriously like this is one of my favorite seasons of All Stars. I think it is so much fun. The drama, the, the, like, the dynamic between everybody and the workroom was just so natural and so fun. So, I'm just wondering first how it feels now that this is all out into the world. The whole season is done. What are you feeling now that you're here at the end? I, we're feeling great. Honestly, we filmed it a year year ago so and that was so long ago you know there you know how there are girls that would tell you like little behind the scenes tea I couldn't tell you any of that because <laughs> I forgot anything we filmed so I was watching it for the first time with the viewers and now that it's finally out I'm just like wow we 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 did that it was yeah. a really good <laughs> season and it's sad that it's coming to a close because I feel like just yesterday we were walking the premiere red carpet. Yeah. But hey, here we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've just had the best time. It feels like ever since Canada's Drag Race, I've had the fortune of being on a, com a series once a year. So it's kind of been this <laughs> yeah. annual um, thing that I've been able to connect with fans and show my art and um, up my game. And so this was probably my best, obviously my best, uh, competition so far, yeah. so I'm super proud. So how does, is, has the sisterhood all held up through all of this drama and the, but like the whole cast, because I know there's been a lot that has gone on, so is everybody okay? Well, I think today we can yeah. confirm everyone's okay. okay. You would have asked me that last week, I couldn't have given you the answer. Yeah. You know, girls lead the group chat every other day. But I think it's a sisterhood, and at the end of the day, we are drag artists competing in a competition for $200,000 and a crown and a scepter. You know, some of us have been in this position of almost winning before, so there really is a lot of pressure. Uh, coming into All Stars, and I think sometimes the audience forgets that. So as sisters, yes. we fight, we argue, but we get over it. Yeah, it's all part of the the drama. I like to think of it kind of like wrestling, where you have that, um, you kind of have all of those different relationships. Some are best friends, and then there's some of the animosity and some of that tension. It just it creates fun storylines and fun drama. So I like it. Yeah. You know, it's been a very fun season, and before we get into some of the wildest moments of All Stars 8, I want to start with, I mean, important diplomatic matters, because we are on C-SPAN today. Um, can we please get, like, a full war room breakdown of the alliance area of it all? Because I feel like when I interviewed Kahana when she was eliminated, she was like, Heidi, Jimbo, Candy, Lala, and I was like, Kahana, that means everybody was in an alliance. Like, what is, what is the breakdown? Okay. He, there, he, there, there were a lot of alliances. Here's the team. The main <laughs> alliance that walked into All Stars first together were me, Jimbo, and Heidi. Okay. The three. Right? Then uh, Heidi created an alliance with Lala. They didn't show this, but secretly, Heidi asked me to be part of her alliance with Lala. Okay. So it was me, Lala, and Heidi. And Jimbo didn't know this, actually. I never knew that. So, surprise. You know now. <laughs> you know now. Wow. Then Alexis wrote a letter to me, Heidi, and Jimbo trying to be in an alliance with us. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know, that obviously never happened. So then after I joined the alliance with Heidi, we got Kahana in that alliance. Okay. So that was an alliance in itself. And so is that when you were coming for me? That your new alliance is that? <laughs> Somewhere is in that, between there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, so that's when that's when the, the target got on my back. Okay. Uh-huh. And then towards the end of the season, when I was in the bottom two, I told Alexis that I would save her. She said, you know, I was just mm -hmm. feeding her Correct. what she wanted to hear. 
Um, so there were about 15 alliances. 15. And then I think Darien and, and Kasha had the lions. And then... Well, and that, that one fell apart, too. Didn't yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I think Monica and, and, and Nisha had the lions. And that also... Yeah. That well, was just... By episode two. That was... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was Wait, a mess. Okay. So that's eight that I'm counting on my fingers. Um, add that to the history books, that one. Um, but I do want to go back to the first, I think, viral moment of the season was... Alexis having her first Oscar-worthy crying moment <laughs> and untucked. So yeah. can you take me back to that moment, what you were all feeling? What was the reaction like in the room? And did anybody ever approach her, besides RuPaul, later and be like, Alexis, what's going on? Well, I think we all kind of understand that it's a heightened emotional state. You know, we all are just wanting it to go so well. And so kind of we're all on the brink of tears at any point. I think it was just surprising. It always caught me off guard when she was going to burst into tears. It was kind of just like here or there. It was just, she'd spring a leak like a water bag. Ah, do you know, especially that first Untucked, poor Monica's like pouring her heart out, so upset as to like, yeah. you know, her being in the bottom. And then all of a sudden, Alexa starts bawling. <laughs> I don't think any of us were shocked or surprised. No. I think we expected Miss Alexis to be as dramatic as she was. <laughs> yeah. I think we all watched season nine. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. So I think the most unexpected moment of the season though, Heidi quitting, unfortunately. Now that some time has gone by, Candy, mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel about what she said happened between you two, the alleged conversation? Like was Heidi, misremembering or was mm -hmm. there something that went on? Um, well, being that now nah, we f hate each other. <laughs> well, first of all, me and Heidi are really good. L let's break this down. So we had a conversation in the van and in the tent. And I want to let everyone know, you know, I had whispered to Jimbo earlier. I was like, I'm, I'm bored. I was like, I'm bored. I'm going to go like start drama. And I'm going to go tell the girls in your competition. And Jimbo was like, don't do that. And I was like, well, I'm bored, so I'm going to do it. So then... I went to the van, and now, I don't remember every details. Heidi says that I said, I will send Jimbo home. Right. I think I said, we should all send Jimbo home, and <gasps> everyone agreed, but, you know, we can agree So, this. was that part of the alliance when you said we should all send Jimbo home? Yeah. Wait, so you <laughs> did say it. <laughs> what the so, fuck? did say it. So, I was just like, well, because I didn't say I was going to send Jimbo home. I said, I think, I was like, joking around, I was like, you know, we, I was like, she's the competition. Y'all know what y'all gotta do. She ain't left in the bottom. And every girl, every girl in that van was like, uh huh, uh huh. I found it interesting when it was brought up in the workroom because I was like, oh, we're all putting this on me now. But we all shook our head yes. And well, there was one girl specifically. I'm not gonna say her name. Say it. She say the she name. Is. Say, say it. Name. Manfield. <laughs> we were on the ride back to the hotel that mm -hmm. night after Heidi had left, and she was like. You know, I thought getting rid of Jimbo was like Fight Club. We all know about it, but we don't talk about it. Oh! <laughs> Jimbo, wow. how do you respond to this? Well, I'm glad I sent that <laughs> <home. laughs> <laughs> I got that and, and the tea is, me and Jimbo really are in the lines, which is the reason why we're all the way at the final two together. I've had an opportunity to send Jimbo home, and I didn't. You know, my thing is, at the end of the day, I was bored and I was like, girl, let's make some good TV and let's see what drama comes out of it. So, Jimbo, let's yeah. go back to when, so you hear this for the first time, this whole conversation between Heidi and Candy. What did you believe in the moment when you heard that? Because I was trying to study your face in the moment. And... In the moment, I am genuinely confused about what the f is going on <laughs> around here because I am literally, I thought, I have an alliance with these two who I thought, <laughs> where my only alliance <laughs> turns out. Oh, because you didn't know about Heidi and Lana's alliance. No, I didn't. I'm literally in there thinking me and you and Heidi have an alliance. So the, all of the things happening were really confusing for me, trying to figure out why is this happening? Why was Candy mad about that? Like, it was all super confusing. I was kind of like, who's coming for me? And then Candy was like, you know, some of the girls, Jimbo, are talking about, <laughs> you know, there's a few seeds being sowed. It turns out it was you sowing those seeds, it was man. Candy. <laughs> and the thing is, is like, um, when that whole situation happened, uh, it wasn't, I know, because a lot of people were like, oh, well, you know, you're gaslighting Heidi. And my thing is, we, and even till this day, we still agree to disagree. I don't remember saying, I will send Jimbo home. See, there's a difference in wording between I will send Jimbo home and we should all send Jimbo home. Because then everyone agrees to it and then everyone's, and you know, <laughs> then everyone says yes. I, I can't say if Heidi agreed to it or not, but um, mm -hmm. my thing is, you know, and, and Heidi was being a real ass 
If I go to the gym, I'll be like, girl, here's the tea. Go talk to Candy. And, you know, I get it because at the end of the day, we walk in there together as yeah. a trio. So I understood it. And I could have sat in the workroom and be like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, we sell set that. Let's get over it. And we could have just gone about our day and gone on to the, the main stage. True. Or we could have made some good TV <laughs> and been talking about it now at the end of the season. And get the you Emmy. Um, and get the Emmy. Come on. Exactly. We want that Emmy. So this was all just a candy producer muse moment playing uh, out in front of another us. Another production. <laughs> there you have it. Muse. There you have it. Love it. I am curious about this too every season of All Stars. When you were both voting, did you find yourselves thinking of the fan reaction to whoever you would vote for? Did that sort of dictate no. how you voted? No? Hell no. I think when you go into All-Stars and you think about what the outside world is going to think about you, like a few girls on our season did, that's when you, you, you get caught up and you get caught up in lies and right. promises that you've made. And now the fans are like, girl, but you promised her you were going to keep mm. her. And it just becomes messy. Yeah. Vote how you, how you want. It's like Lala said. I'm voting how I want. I'm not voting based on track record. I love that she said that all at season, the, yeah. You know, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, if you care so much about what other people say, well, then why even come to All-Stars? Right. True. Yeah. Well, I would. I don't judge my voting based on the audience perspective. I learned in UK versus the world that whatever choice you do make have social ramifications within your game in the show, mm -hmm. in the competition. So. For me, I was really conscious this past competition to make sure that I was voting in line with the girls because yeah. when you go rogue and you start kind of doing what you want, that gives other people the free pass to go, okay, well, mm -hmm. it's my turn. I'm gonna do whatever I want. And if you can kind of keep people voting in a way that's somehow predictable or explainable, it kind of helped in that moment to justify. And it even kind of helps as the person being eliminated, you know, for example, when um, Alexis was eliminated, um, it, it kind of helps understand, okay, well, why did I go? Okay, well, you know, X, Y, and Z, the track record. Yeah. On this well, to be fair, Alexa was eliminated because she was playing sneaky games. <laughs> We're gonna get to that. Oh, we will get to it. Yes, uh -huh. I definitely want to talk about that. Um, but there, I want to bring up another one first because there were moments where the group did all sort of align on somebody, even though maybe the precedent in the season <laughs> didn't suggest that. Like oh, James. Oh, I know where this is going. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, the James elimination does surprise me because after the Rusical, you all seem to vote for James after unanimously voting for Kahana the week prior, but Kahana didn't get eliminated because it was the non-elimination episode. So what changed in that moment that made everybody switch from Kahana to James? Everyone was so shocked about the James elimination. We were not. No. We voted based on what we saw during the Rusical. Okay. <clears throat> yes, we have voted for Kahana the week prior because Kahana was the worst in that challenge of the mm -hmm. Snatch game, right? Next to Jessica, obviously. When it came to the Rusical, Kahana, one, I don't think Kahana should have even been in the bottom. Yeah. Kahana had the hardest part in the Rusical, mm -hmm. and to me, the hardest choreography. James was given something that James does, and James didn't deliver as much as she should have. So, in a great Rusical, in a great lineup of queens, it was just fair that we just voted James out. And also, yeah. guess what? I voted James because I wanted to vote James out. And I voted, for me, a really, a lot of it comes down to runways for me. I love runways. Mm -hmm and the fashion mm -hmm. and the costume and the look, mm -hmm. especially when you're at All Stars, there's a certain level that you expect as a, as a fan and you know, and me as a designer. And so just in that moment, I didn't like her Grace Jones look. Yeah. And I didn't like the yeah. way the foxtails hung. I didn't like yeah. the way the fabric, I didn't like it the was hood. Odd. I didn't yeah. like the hair. Mm -hmm. The whole thing didn't say power of Grace Jones. It felt droopy drapey i was like and let's be real here it could have been kahana jimbo me lala jessica sure. or alexis in the bottom with james james is gonna go home yeah well i do think that everyone i've been saying this consistently to every in ex exit interview i think that this season is one of the the best in terms of performances and the challenges because i feel like the people who end up in the bottom, it's like I look at it and I'm like, you didn't do a bad job. It's right. just the season was performing at right. such a high level that it was just the people who weren't, I think it was Michelle who said at one point, it's the A pluses versus the A minuses. And yeah. that's truly how it felt. You were both involved in another moment uh, with Alexis over role selection for the improv challenge. Alexis said, that her crying was about a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. Then Kahana nearly left and said that the vibe in the room wasn't it. But then Jimbo, you had this really cute little like song that you were doing with Alexis where you were like mm. touching her chest and yeah, it was happy, just- happy, in your heart. Yeah, it was so cute. Um, but that was, but then after that, Kahana was like, 
this isn't it, I'm leaving. <laughs> it looked like she was gonna quit. And then Rue entered the room to give you that amazing, like, tough love talk. Mm. So what do you remember about the vibe in that room that Kahana was talking about after that moment? And then what was it like when Rue came in to give you that? After Heidi left the competition, um, the aura was a little weird in the competition. It just planted seeds for trees for people to be like, oh, you know what, she left, I can leave too. Mm -hmm. So when we got to the workroom that day, we were already given this huge pamphlet of the characters and stuff, and we were all a little confused about the challenge. And then that ordeal went on for a good hour. We were sitting there yeah. in silence for a good 30 minutes because wow. no one wanted to give up their roles. What you didn't see was actually when uh, Alexis was also mad at Lala for not giving up her role as the cop too. <laughs> you know, there was a lot that, that was involved. And that morning, a few girls were just not having it. And it's a very stressful competition, and people don't realize how stressful it is. And when you're sitting there, and we're all going through the same situation, and now you're bawling, crying out of nowhere. So, and people, I, I saw a lot of it where people were like, oh, but you're so insensitive for getting up and like not letting Alexis feel her emotions. I've let her feel her emotions the entire season, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like at this point, girl, we're crying over a role, a role that I offered to audition, and he said no. So, what can we do about that? True. I guess what? I don't want the attorney. <laughs> <laughs> for good reasons, because look, I landed her in the bottom. You know, I am a peace. Keeper, peacemaker. Now. Uh, now, I was gonna say this is a now, very different game for Jimbo. Yes, now. Well, she was not a peacekeeper. I, was say, yes. I looking at any one person from a scene in a television show no. is not is not gonna tell you about the person. I am a peacekeeper in my life <laughs> and in my heart and in the world. I'm really glad that I was able to try and give Alexis some energy. I wanted to try and change her energy and remind her we're making a show. We're competing. This is all. The stakes are really high. Mm -hmm. It's reasonable and acceptable to be in your feelings yeah. and it's also reasonable and acceptable to move through them and to, yes. and so I was trying to to help her move through it and get that energy mm -hmm. out of her and go get grounded and go okay let's put on an awesome show and let's do this challenge and let's have a good time mm -hmm. and I was really excited to when Mama Ru came in that was you know as everyone was dropping like flies we, we were like, gagged I was like you better get Ru that's the only thing that's going to fix yeah. this and five minutes later they got Mama Ru she came in she got us together and it was so exciting it was like, you know, that. when mom comes with the fly swatter and you're all going to get a spanking. Uh -huh. oh. And on the hip. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so I was just excited because I knew I wasn't getting a spanking. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and Jessica were good. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it was everybody but Jimbo ah! and Jessica. Yes, Oops. okay. Um, but yeah, that moment, I, I think that was one of Rue's best episodes of the entire series between that and her performance in the, in the improv challenge, which I, I thought was... That truly my favorite improv challenge or even comedy challenge that Drag Race has ever done. It was so funny. When you answer that damn banana, I <laughs> lost my mind. And the stink finger, like, I mean, it's just, it is so iconic. But also, wait, can't, okay, so for this next question. Um, oh my God, someone's written you a letter. To Candy, the producer muse. <laughs> Candy, Alexa said that she asked you to be in an alliance and I had written no, which you seem to not remember, which is true, I completely forgot. Is there more, to this moment that you can share. Okay, so at the beginning of the season, <laughs> Alexis, like I said, wrote me, Jimbo, and Heidi a letter. All of you got letters. Uh-huh. It was not a letter, it was a note. It was a written note. Alexis Postal Service Director. So <laughs> she she was being very, very nice to the girls on set, mm -hmm. giving us food and barbecue for us and all this stuff. We had already had this alliance, so we were like, mm, girl, we'll, we'll see. And the we'll see never came because I we honestly we do so much in the span of such a little time that I forgot. So when she brought it up and on top, I was like, <laughs> I was like, she has my lipstick choice and she's gonna she's gagged me. She said, oh, I wrote you a letter and guess what? You didn't reply, so now I'm gonna sing home. Mm. So I was gagged, mm. but I honestly have forgotten. The reality is, girl, I was over alliance out. I can't be aligned with the whole. With the entire alliances, work yes. I also don't know why she didn't uh, eliminate me when she had the chance. Uh, people keep saying that, oh, like, maybe she's afraid of you, or, you know, even though we saw, she said that uh, we had, like, some sort of agreement that I said, oh, yeah. I'll keep you, keep me. Uh -huh. Probably just saying bullshit to this day, you know? You said but, that on the next episode, yeah. <laughs> right, you know, I, I don't know why she felt so compelled to keep me. But I was like this. Thank you, because now here I am. Tell Zoo. <laughs> she did say that the Lala crush tran transferred from Lala to you. So, or do it's you think like that was her trying to it's win like favor? Possession. That was her trying to win favor. Exactly. But I have, I think me and Heidi still have our handwritten letters. 
I have Heidi from Alexis. Yeah, Heidi gave me hers to read, and then I gave mine to Heidi, and they were the exact same letter. And I had oh my, my little letter too, but um, it was not the same letter. Mine was a little note, and actually Alexis made a, a barbecue. And we were allowed to go, we aren't allowed to really be around each other or, or talk too much so that you keep everything within yeah. the world. So she, Alexis has this barbecue and at the barbecue was our only opportunity to secretly connect. And so as I was given my burger, I slid underneath the hamburger buns <laughs> my answer, which was, I will see, I'll talk to the girls. Okay. And I slid it under the barbecue. And so, this is also a true story. Oh, this yeah. is true. This isn't it, it like the Jimbo true. stealing. It, 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 was, it was Fourth of July. Yeah, it is it really? Of course. Yeah, no, it was Fourth of July weekend, so oh. we had the weekend off. It was our secret little code, and we were able to. That piece of wig hair that's really from RuPaul's yeah. wig hair. You would be surprised at how much stuff is left behind on set. <laughs> Yeah, you will. Even RuPaul's wigs. Because I think I, in the moment, thought it was like a Jimbo bit, and I think people watching it did too, but it's totally real. I no. love that. That belongs in the museum. Real. I love this. Um, okay, so I do also want to talk about Lala's exit. Uh, it was a very heartbreaking moment for everybody, fans included. Oh, yeah. um, and Alexis was getting a lot of flack for this online, but Good. I mean, no. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's you know, everybody did vote for Lala. It was revealed. Yeah. So, um, do you Well, think but not it's... everyone promised Lala to not, to not stay home. Right. I thought you told Lala you weren't gonna send her home. I didn't promise. I just told her that I would never forget what she did for me, and I never will. And you know, I hope yeah. and pray that she will be a sister forever, and maybe even more, but. Ooh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So I remember when I first watched this moment, I knew before Lala was eliminated, I was thinking, Alexis is very deliberately just saying, I will remember, I won't forget that you saved me, but she was never saying like, that means I'm going to save you. So let you. me ask right. you this, so, if I was telling you that, you were in the workroom, oh, would I'm you not feel secure like, oh, I'm gonna Oh be yeah, good. no, I'm mm -hmm. saying like, I could see from a viewer's perspective, like higher up what yeah. was going on. And I was like, oh God, the, she's she's gonna eliminate Lala. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that I agree with Alexis's point of view. Do you think though it's fair that Alexis is getting that flack when everybody voted for Lala? Well, yeah, because Alexis, <laughs> Alexis, said, Alexis said, I won't get rid of you. See, I will keep you. I'm a person of my word. And so even in the competition, that's why that uh, my vote was for Lottery. Candy mm -hmm. and I had an alliance, so I mm -hmm. cannot vote right. for Candy. Mm -hmm. And so in those things, you, there, you don't have a lot. And so you, all you have is your word. You know, in that moment, I, that's why I asked her on the couch after. I was like, you said yeah. you wouldn't. Yeah. And, I, and she looks at me like, <laughs> and, 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 people may, and people may look at that and be like, oh, well, well, what's the difference between that and James? The difference is, I didn't tell James I would keep her. And, and I got all the flack for it, even though we all voted for her, but that wasn't what I said. When it came out to Lala's elimination, after she had just saved you the week prior, but granted, you play the game the way you want to play the game. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. never going to tell anyone how to play a game when there's $200,000 and a crowd on the line. At the end of the day, this is Survivor of the Fittest, and people, I think sometimes the viewers forget that this is literally a game of like Big Brother and Survivor. You play the game dirty, you lie, you cheat, you steal to get to the very end. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, there's only one that wins. Yep. And I do feel, <laughs> I do feel that the fans don't understand the game the way it's supposed to be played. Mm -hmm. This game is created for us to be played. Yep. Yeah. The game is created for us to be too strategic and have alliances and lie and this and that and pick lipsticks. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, Alexis voted the way she wanted to, mm -hmm. and it made for great television. It, did. it was heartbreaking because Lala was one of my closest friends since yeah. he's 13. Yeah. I mean, you can see me on the main stage breaking down. Mm -hmm. It was heartbreaking. Yeah. And Lala was such a fun energy to have in the workroom. Yeah. But that's the way Alexis plays the game, and mm -hmm. I'm not mad at her for it. The last two questions I have on the final two episodes of the main competition, Jimbo, you then did send Alexis home, but you did <laughs> win a lip sync. I yes! was so happy because I finally did it. You, I mean, that moment that you talked about the difficulty and you know losing so many lip syncs in a row—that really, like, I think a lot of people didn't realize 
why that was so difficult for you. They just see it as somebody on a competition, but like you're like, no, I'm a drag entertainer. This right. is what we do. And it's it's a hard thing to lose those lip syncs. And so, especially in front of your icon. Yeah. And sometimes the person that wrote the music, like for mm -hmm. instance, the Spice Girl, who I was yeah. like, oh my God, I'm in front of Sporty Spice Mal mm -hmm. and I'm performing a Spice Girl song and it's not going good. How did it so feel? So it sucked. How did it feel to finally win that lip sync, though? It felt amazing, especially <laughs> beating Silky, the you know the lip sync assassin. Oh, love Silky, and yeah. she you know is has an incredible track record. So I think if there was anyone I was gonna take down, I would either want it to be Candy. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness! Or... I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> 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 and it was such a. Let me tell you, sitting there in the audience knowing I was not gonna go home. But you did say, for in the elimination of Alexis, you said, some of these choices make me feel like I can't trust you when you were picking the lipstick. So what w was that at the root of voting for Alexis? Was the sort of, you, you had seen everything that was going on with the gameplay? That elimination, that elimination specifically, yeah. I remember it was a four. Walking into the workroom, Alexis had told Jessica, I'm not gonna vote for you. I don't know if this is on camera or off camera, but she told Jessica, I'm not gonna vote for you. And then she told me, oh girl, I got you, you got me. And then she went and sat down with Jimbo and was like, girl, get rid of candy. So we, so she was pretty much telling everyone so that we wouldn't vote her. Now, me and Jessica, we making eye contact. We're like, mm, girl, you already know, I ain't voting for you, you ain't voting for me. And then I told Jimbo, said, bitch, you ain't voting for me, I ain't voting for you. So we knew at the end of the day, it was time to vote Alexis out. Okay. Especially the week prior, she had just voted Lala out. Yeah. <laughs> the last thing, obviously, uh, that left us with the top three, which was Jessica, Jimbo, and Candy. Unfortunately, Jessica also left us Candy. I know it was a very crazy thing that led up to this. The lip sync Thank assassin you. won, but then it was a tie between Jessica and Jimbo, and then it reverted back to you. Can you tell me the reason why you decided to vote out Jessica? I think the worst part of that elimination was not winning the money and still having to send some home. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Fame Game Queens. Or rather, you're welcome for your $60,000. That was such a hard decision because Jessica was such a light in the workroom yeah. and she was just so great. But I was being strategic. Listen, again, this is strategy. We are going into the final two. I don't know what the last challenge is going to be, but... I know that if it's a performance challenge, if it's a choreography challenge, Jessica will whoop my ass in the finale. And I saw how much the judge, the judges love Jimbo, but you know who the judges love more than everyone else was Jessica. And Jessica had been in the bottom now what three times I believe. I it, was times, it was yeah. it was just all lined up for mm -hmm. her to go, and it sucked because I would have loved to have my Latin sister to be like the first two Latin girls final two. But I had to think bigger and think, or I can be the first Latin winner for all stars you know it's just it's strategy and it sucked and i know most people are gagged that i did not send jimbo home we were in the lions it say what off. you want we it were in the off. lions right at here. the end of the day i we played everyone in that workroom and here we are the final two mm -hmm. There we go, high five right there. You both have been absolutely wonderful on this season. It has been so fun getting to talk to you this entire time. Um, thank you so much for your time and best of luck to you heading into the finale. I mean, Joey, it's just, you both you. deserve to win, so truly. So who are you rooting for? I am truly, this is like the <laughs> hardest. She's on the border. <laughs> it is the hardest, like you both deserve it so much and it's been just, so fun watching you this whole Thank season. Thank you. So, so, maybe so we'll have lipstick a, do you have? Well, actually, I have <laughs> Lala's lipstick. <laughs> Here, here's for a, a double win. Who knows? Thank yeah, you another double win, yes. Well, thank you both so much, and best thank of luck to you, you in the finale. Thank you.